the internet is dead. Or at least that's what a growing number of people believe. Why? Well, because of the rise of stuff like this. It's known as AI slop, the latest form of spam infecting the web. Whoa, that gold bar is glowing. Whoa, 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 wow. Whoa. And it's this uncanny, bizarre posting that's feeding something called the dead internet theory. It's basically a conspiracy theory that most of the traffic, posts and users on the internet have been replaced by bots and AI-generated content, intentionally coordinated to control the population. And that humans have lost control of the World Wide Web. The term did come from conspiracy theory circles, but you have to keep in mind that back when the term was being coined, most content would have been coming from people. So you can see why it would be falling into that conspiracy theory camp. This is Jake Renzella, a computer scientist from the University of New South Wales. And he says while the theory is probably not true, the way we use the internet has changed a lot. The internet was created by the US government in 1983 to communicate and share information. It wasn't openly accessible to the public for about a decade, but eventually debuted as the World Wide Web. Back then, social media wasn't a thing, at least as we know it now. Instead, there were forums where people could write notes, upload images and share ideas with each other directly, paving the way for the many different social media platforms we've come to know over the past decade or so. But... 2024 was the point in which um, there were some reports that estimated that 50% of new content being generated on the internet was coming from bots. That was sort of a landmark uh, moment. The goal for these bots is usually to rustle up engagement. That's why we see bizarre mashups of popular things like animals. And the obvious reason is, well, money. Social media is advertisement based, so if you've got an account with lots and lots of engagement, um, often the social media will pay out those creators some portion of the ad revenue. But Jake says it might not just be about money. What made the internet great, which was being accessible and free and quick and easy, has meant there's also opportunities for potentially governments or agencies or companies to try and manipulate viewers of those platforms. And that's sort of what we're getting to with the dead internet theory. As these AI accounts gain followers and interactions, mostly from other bots, their posts appear in more users' feeds, making the accounts hot property for spreading disinformation and swaying public opinion. If you have huge numbers of account expressing support for something, it's not necessarily that you believe it, but you might think, oh, well, lots of people think that I need to pay more attention to that, when maybe there's not actually many real people with those thoughts. Back in 2018, a study from Nature Communications, which analysed 14 million tweets from 2016 to 2017, found that bot accounts with high numbers of followers were significantly involved in spreading misinformation and disinformation, usually around significant events like wars and elections. More recently, in January 2024, digital forensic experts in Germany found tens of thousands of AI bot accounts on X that were being used for pro-Russian disinformation campaigns to undermine support for Ukraine. Other investigations found a major spike in bot activity around the recent US election. And these bad actors can also hijack dormant accounts of real people, giving the AI content they post more credibility. It's not just social media that's changing. Experts say the internet as most of us use it has become more commercialised and regulated. In 2016, the Australian government forced internet service providers to block more than 60 illegal file sharing sites like Pirate Bay. And internet providers voluntarily acted to block sites like 4chan for hosting inappropriate content in 2019. And while no one person or company or government owns the internet, companies like Meta, Amazon, Apple and Google, which now controls over 90% of the search engine market, have a lot of influence. And that can make finding information or genuine content harder. A study from the Webis Research Group last year found that search engines like Google and Bing have been prioritising web pages based on keywords or monetization over the quality of the content, including pages made with AI. 
Whether you're trying to search for information or scrolling on social media, it's also getting harder to work out what is AI-generated content and what is human-generated content, something that companies like Meta are actually embracing. We built some AIs you can interact with and then partnered with awesome people to play some of them to make them even more fun. Introducing Meta's AIs. In 2023, the company experimented with 28 of their own AI-generated profiles for human users to interact with. And in December 2024, Meta executive Connor Hayes said that we can expect a whole lot more in the future. There's a few differences here between the, the, the bots we've been talking about and what Meta's doing. And there's a few similarities. It's not a real person. It's generating content. Uh, there's some financial reason, I, I suppose, that Meta would be doing this. Differences are, well, Meta is saying that these are AI accounts. So in the profile, it says, hey, I'm an AI-generated bot. So they're not necessarily trying to trick people in the same way that these, uh, these AI-generated accounts uh, were. If we don't know, that's pretty dangerous. And this is where, sort of on a human level, it's uncharted territories because, like I said, if you used to go to that town square, you would know if someone is there or not. You know, maybe they could lie to you, but you know this, what's going on. Where we don't have that evolutionary instinct to determine the, uh, the, the, the signals we're getting on the internet. So, where does that leave us in the context of the dead internet theory? Well, while experts like Jake reckon it isn't a reality just yet, it is a good lens to view the internet through going forward, and a reminder to be sceptical and keep a critical mind. The way I view it is that the internet did die, right? And we have something new. It's still called the internet, but it's changed. We still are the main drivers of the internet, so what we want is what people will build. If, if we use it, they'll continue to invest resources into it. Like all technologies, it's getting more sophisticated, not less. So if we're equipped to think about it and navigate it, uh, I think there could be huge positives for the technology.